Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at partnership and this is part two of five. And in this session, we're going to look at income allocation and lost allocation. This topic is covered in advanced accounting. It also covered on the CPA exam. I really like would like to connect with my viewers, my followers, my subscribers. Uh, please connect with me. I have a LinkedIn account. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I, I keep you up to date. Also, if you're a Facebook user, I have a Facebook page, uh, Accounting Lectures. Definitely go to my YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube so you're always to get any updates. And I am on Twitter as well. Um, so in this session, we're going to look at how partners allocate net income and net loss. Simply put, what, what is the overall idea? The overall idea is this. And I want you to think about Forrest Gump, okay? Uh, it's funny, but uh, maybe it will make some sense. The, the, partner, the partnership is a business. So they're going to generate revenues and they're going to incur expenses. And at the end of the year, they're going to have either a net income slash loss or a net loss. The question is, what do we do with this net income and net loss? And Forrest Gump, what did, what did Forrest Gump do? He split that 50-50. Okay, so now we are going to look at various agreements between the shareholders on how they allocate this net income and net loss. Because as a partner, you're basically you're gonna you're gonna be allocated part of the income, but how much of it will be allocated it depends on the agreement. It could be a fixed ratio. This could be a fixed ratio. What is a fixed ratio? Basically, a percentage. That's what a fixed ratio is. A fixed ratio is a percentage, or it could be based on your capital balance. Well, what does it mean based on your capital balance? It means based on your contribution. How much are you contributing to this? partnership okay or it could be based on the interest on capital investment so let me just kind of look at some numbers here for example fixed ratio is we're talking about 60 40 that's what a fixed ratio is based on capital balance let's assume you contributed 100,000 the other partner contributed 100,000 that's total of 200,000 that's 50% and 50%. Or it could be based on interest on the capital investment. So basically, they're going to pay you interest based on your investment. It could also be some sort of a fixed salary allocation. And it could be a combination of all of those. I'm just showing you you have different, different things. Or you could also have a bonus as a percentage of income. Or it could be a combination of all of those. So how you allocate income, it could be a combination of all of those. It could, it could be just fixed ratio, depending on what you agreed upon. That's that's the whole thing. And the best way to illustrate this is to work actually an example, because without working an example, this will remain basically theory. On January 1st, we have Tony and we have John formed TNJ, TNJ Personal Financial Planning with Capital Investment, 480 and 340 respectively. So Tony contributed 480, John contributed 380. The partnership agreement provide that profit and losses to be allocated as follow. So notice they have four levels of allocation. First, annual salaries of 42 and 66 are to be granted to Tony and John. John is entitled to a 10% bonus of net income after salaries and bonuses, but before interest and capital investment is subtracted. Each partner is to receive an interest credit of 8% on the original capital investment, and any remaining profit is allocated 40 and 60. So this is basically a hierarchy of allocation. When you have a bonus, when you have a bonus situation, the first thing I suggest you do is to compute the bonus, okay? And John is entitled to a 10% bonus of net income. Maybe John does a lot of work at the company, and that's why they want to give them, they agree to for John to get 10% income, okay? So on December 31st, the partnership reported net income before salaries, interests, and bonuses of 188. But the bonus is after salaries and uh, the 10% uh, the bonus is after salaries and bonus, but before interest and capital. So we first, we need to compute the bonus. So what is the bonus equal to? So how do, we, how do we set up the bonus? How do we set up the bonus? So let me show you how do we set up the bonus. Well, the bonus, what we're saying, the bonus, the bonus equal to 10%, 10% times income before salaries, income, I'm sorry, 
income after salaries, not before salaries, income after salaries minus the bonus. Okay, so what do we know about income after salaries? Well, 10% will stay the same times. What is income after salaries? Well, we know that net income is 180,000 before salaries, before salaries. So what is net income after salaries? It's 188 minus the salaries, minus 42, minus 66. Okay, and that's open the bracket, minus B. Okay, close the bracket. Okay, now what we have is we have 10% times 188 minus, uh, minus 108 equal to 80,000. So income after salaries is 80,000 minus B, minus B. Then what we have now is 10%, 10% times 80,000 is 8,000 minus 10% times B is 0.1B, that's all equal to the bonus, 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 okay. Now what we have to do is we have 1B here, so what's going to happen is, uh, all we have to do is uh, just rearrange, rearrange the formula. We have 1B here, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to add plus plus 0.1b plus 0.1b and basically this 1b is gone now we have 1.1b equal to 8000 now I'm just gonna eliminate b I'm gonna take b and divide both sides by 1.1 then the b the bonus equal to 7273 and this is the, this is how we compute the bonus. Now, if you want to see if indeed the bonus is seven thousand two hundred and seventy-three, well, net income is one eighty-eight, salaries were uh, uh, one hundred and eight thousand, so we have to deduct the salaries. And if we deduct the bonus, if the bonus is assumed to be seven thousand two hundred and seventy-three, if we deduct the bonus, our net income is 72,000 that's subject to the bonus 727 if we multiply this by 10 percent will give us this figure which is kind of this is why we just confirm it that this is net income subject to the bonus so our computation is correct net income subject to bonus so we figure out net income that's subject to bonus okay let's go back to the powerpoint slides now that we we, we, did, we did the computation the first thing is we compute the bonus and with bonus is 7273 now we're going to start with the allocation when we allocate first we allocate the salary so when you allocate you go one two three four you go through this method first we have remember we have 188,000. we're going to allocate 42 to tony and 66 to john so that's 108,000. now what you do is basically what you have left is one and um, you you started with 188 and you allocated 108 and whatever is left will be allocated the next allocation level is the bonus we're going to give john 7273 tony doesn't get a bonus okay now we allocated an additional 7273 and level three what was level three level three each partner to receive an interest credit of eight percent of their original investment so we'd look at their original investment multiplied by eight percent um so Whoops, sorry. For John, for Tony, it's thirty-eight thousand four hundred. And what? Now you, you might be asking, where does the thirty-eight thousand four hundred coming from? Well, Tony contributed four hundred and eighty thousand. You multiplied by eight percent, and Tony contributed three hundred and forty thousand. Multiplied by eight percent, and this is how we came up with the interest. So basically, we, they want to be compensated for their capital. That's equal to sixty-five thousand six hundred. So so far, they allocated one hundred eighty thousand eight seventy-three. What's left is seven thousand one hundred and twenty-seven. And how do we allocate this? We agreed to allocate anything left forty percent to Tony, sixty percent to John. Okay, so that's what's left. And at the end, you add up all of Tony's. Uh, allocation all of John's allocation when you add them up they should add up to 188,000 let me go over this one more time 
let me do this real quick. So first we started with the uh, salary allocation and what's left then we allocate 7273 then we allocate the 38 the 27 and all in all after we allocated those three we allocated 188.73 and level four it says anything that's left what's left in income is this much it's allocated 40 to 60 and when you add up all of tony's all of john they should add up to 188,000. okay now what's the entry just kind of in case you're wondering what's the entry well we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna debit income summary 188 credit Tony Capital and John Capital for Tony for 83 251 and this is a credit 83 251 and for for John 104 749 okay just in case you're wondering okay so what happens sometimes when we have insufficient income to cover the allocation? So we don't have enough income to go over the three or the four steps. It doesn't matter. We're just going to go through the process to allocate the income. So let me, we'll work an example. Amount by which salary and or interest ex exceeds net income is allocated to individual partners and their agreed ratio for allocating residual income. So let's just take a look at an example. Okay. For example, assume Adams and Brown agree to divide profit as follow. Adams to get a 4,000 salary, Brown to get 2,000 salary. 8% interest on the average capital balances of Adams, which is 77,500, Brown 37,500, and any remainder to be divided equally. So let's see how it works. And let's assume for the sake of this illustration, we have 11,000 of net income. Well, first we're going to allocate 4,000 in salary and 2,000 to Brown. So 11 minus 6, we are left with 5,000. Then it says allocate 8% on their capital balances. Based on the 8%, Adams get 6,200, Brown gets 3,000. So notice what happened. We only have 5,000 um, 5, left, but we allocated 9,200. Okay, simply put, if we allocate minus 9,200, we are at a deficit of 4,200. Not a big deal. So just we just keep going. This, the third option, it says, any excess allocation, which is 4,200, negative 4,200 is divided equally. 2,100 negative, 2,100 negative. All in all, Adams gets 8,100, which is 4,000, plus 6,200, minus 2,100. Brown got 2,000, plus 3,000, 5 minus 2,100, equal to 2,900. When we allocate the final, they, they, they should only equal to net income of... 11,000. So if there's a negative, just keep going with the allocation process. That's what we are saying. Now, let's talk a little bit more about salaries and interest expense. Salaries and interest expense, salaries and interest, I'm sorry, they are not expense for the purpose of partnership. They are considered allocation of profit. So when I say we are going to be allocating a salary to John or to Adams of 4,000 and to Brown of 2,000, those are not expense. So they don't go on the income statement. The same thing with interest. Because in a partnership, those are allocation of profit. Okay? So some change in capital account as if salaries and interest were considered allocation of profit. So, so they do change, but they are not considered an expense. They do change the capital account. Okay? Why? Because if you allocate, they're going to increase the account. Since the normal practice is to recognize salaries and interest allocation of profit, any such amount treated as an expense should be adequately disclosed. So if you happen to treat them as an expense, you have to disclose this information. Why? Because in a partnership, when a partner takes a salary, it should not be an expense for the partnership. Okay? If you happen to treat it as an expense, make sure you disclose this. And the reason is you want the reader to evaluate the performance of the firm. So simply put, when the company made 188,000 in net income and the owners took out 108,000 in salaries. So what is the what is the uh, what is the net income? What is the net income in that situation? Well, let's do this. Just kind of show you how it works. 188 minus 108. Oops. 188 minus 108 that's equal to 80,000. So, so is did the did the partnership made $80,000 of profit? 
So if I'm if I'm investing in this partnership, should I say the partnership is making eighty thousand of profit, or should I consider the partnership is making one hundred and eighty-eight? Well, if the, if the partners are taking the salary up front, then guess what? The partnership is making eighty thousand because although it says one eighty-eight, but the it's the um, the first one hundred and eight thousand. It's not really mine. So if you treat it as an expense, I need to know. If you're treating it as a withdrawal, I need to know. If it's if you're treated not as an expense, it's an allocation to income. I need to know. So that's why it's important to remember this concept. Adjustment to net income. Um, what happened is sometimes you might have errors in the prior year. Problem in allocation of problems in allocation of profit and loss can result if errors are discovered that occur in a specific prior year and partners have altered profit and loss agreements since the period uh, in which the error occurred. So when you have an error, what do you have to do? Well, guess what? You cannot go back to prior years. What you have to do, you have to allocate the error to the capital account. So you just have, you compute the error and you allocate it to the partner's capital account, whether it's, it's gonna increase or decrease depending on the error itself. Some differences um, from GAAP, Changes in partners' equity should be disclosed, so you need to disclose this. Remember, salary allowances are generally not expense, and if they are expense, you need to you need to disclose them. There's no income tax expense for a partnership because the the the, uh, the profit goes to the partners, and the partners pays income. Interest allowance on capital investment is considered allocation of profits. So when we compute that interest allowance, and what is the interest allowance? What we are saying is this: the partner saying we made an investment, we invested one hundred thousand dollar. Of our own money well we need to be compensated at 10 percent because we invested this money ten thousand dollar well you cannot consider the ten thousand as an expense it's an allocation of profit okay that's what we are saying okay and why do you again you're gonna get a salary because you are working for the uh, for the uh, for the partnership that's why you have a salary allocation then you also want to get an interest income because you invested your money, so you're investing your time, you'll be compensated with a salary. So basically, if you really think about it, just kind of, hopefully it will make more sense to you. Why do we have all these levels of allocation? The various level is, for example, one is because you work there. You're working at the partnership, you're investing time. Two, maybe you have a bonus because you have some, some special skills. Three, because you invested your capital. You invested your capital and you want to be compensated for that money. So you're given money and time well, you're, in, you're being compensated for your time, but you also want to compensate it for your money. Okay, so that's why we have different type of compensation level to basically properly capture what's really happening. Okay, again, it will, this is an agreement between the partners themselves. And this is a statement of changes in partners capital for the year. And basically, this is for Tom and Julie from the prior session. So if you look at the prior session, this should make sense. They started this partnership, therefore their beginning capital is zero on January 1st. Then they made an investment. Tom invested 51, Julie invested 25, a total of 76. Net income allocated for, John, for Tom was 33,553. Net income allocated to Julie was 16,447. And what's gonna happen, this income will be added to their capital. Then we subtract any withdrawals. Tom took 12,000, Julie took, um, Tom took 15, Julie took 12, and this is the ending balance of their capital account, and this is the ending balance for the whole partnership, 99,000. Basically, um, you looked at how do we allocate income for a partnership. If you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, I do encourage you to do so. Please consider donating. If you have any questions, email me. Study hard for the exam. It's worth it.